We're here at TFCon 2022 with Arlene and yourself, Owen, for a celebration of life for Mr. Jack Angel. Let's go inside. Yeah. A story about Jack, but it, it very heavily involves Arlene. Uh, so go for it. <laughs> she would probably need to be out of the room. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm going to take this off. Yeah. Um, so my life, what it is now, uh, is because of Jack and Arlene specifically. Um, I was in a boring, unfulfilling corporate job in pharmaceuticals, and in 2013, uh, Jack and Arlene and Dick Gauthier came to TFCon in uh, Mississauga in Canada. And uh, it was when we still did the sign and go, sign and go, sign and go, because it was free signatures. <laughs> free signatures! Remember that? Yes, I did. <laughs> so I had this laptop case, and it was my first time getting... Uh, the, the voice actors to sign my stuff because I had gone to TFCon every year and I always to watch the panels but I never really met with any of the voice actors and so it's my first time I bought my big Omega Supreme from when I was a kid from the 80s and I had my laptop case and I got Jack to, to sign both of them and uh, you said, can I, can I take a pic? That's so cool. Can I take a picture with you and your laptop case and with Jack? And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you took this picture and I was like, so the person that sits with you and, and Jack yeah. and, like, and, and Dick Gauthier was there and like, how do you get that job? How do you sit beside these awesome people? And then the very next show, I volunteered as for TFCon and they said, oh, it'll take years before you get that job. And the very next year, I had that job. Because of course I had that job. Of course it's history. So, in a very direct way, you led me down the path of starting to not only a volunteer for events, the very next year I left my corporate job, I started event planning, I started event producing, I started my own VR conference, and because of my experience at these shows, I am now a TV producer. I just got a job as a TV producer. Oh my God. And it's directly related to you and Jack. Oh my God. Hey, welcome. Hi, God. So this one? 
Oh, shut up, he's going to do the same stuff. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, that's all good. It's good after the voice because she wants it. Thank you for joining us today, the last day of TFCon Los Angeles 2022. What, a, what an insane week it has been. There's a very distinguished panel before you today, and the reason for this uh, gathering is to remember uh, one of the, dare I say, legends of you dare. Legends of Nostalgia. You better dare. Uh, last year, we, we lost this legend, uh, Mr. Jack Angel, and today, some of his colleagues are going to regale you with some uh, stories, and uh, maybe uh, tell us some of the secrets that happened in the booth. Would so, Mrs. Legend stand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys go and ahead. It's a celebration, not a dirge. <laughs> yes. Yes. Celebration of Jack, who. There was never a joke that he didn't know. <laughs> but we I never remember we knew each other at a particular restaurant in Studio City and then uh, and I would say a oh, great story, but tell him the story, he said, okay, I have one I gotta tell you, then you tell me what I can. But yet I would reply, I would probably arrive clean shaven and leave with a mustache. <laughs> Jack always had stories to top the one, I can't let that happen. Of course, and then I would come back with one, and he'd come back with one, and uh, I never, I, you know, you lose people over the years, as you get to a certain age, and some people you forget, obviously, you never forget him. You never forget Jack, you never forget that smiley face, and all that fucking hair. <laughs> I said to him, I remember saying to him, oh, get your hair when you're dying. Jesus, Jack, that is unbelievable. And he loved that. I talked about him. He thought the same thing about his hair. Loved his hair. Great hair. And um, I'm still waiting, Jack. Okay, great. I, I, I'm hoping one of these days Jack and I will see each other. I will continue to tell jokes to each other because that was I'm quite a guy. You had quite a guy out there. Thank you. you. Man. I, uh, being. Being the uh, youngest one up here. Bitch! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. No, but I, I, I mean, I really owe a lot to Jack. Uh, both Jack and Arlene. Arlene uh, started me in my career in voiceover, and I worked with Jack much more. In, I worked maybe a little bit in animation with Jack, but it was mainly in voiceover, doing commercials and various things like that. And early on in those days. You know, I'm glad I'm going first because I get to say all these wonderful things that everybody is going to say because that's who it was. Just really a, a lovely, giving, you know, generous person. You know, and in our business, having somebody that's generous, you know, because everybody's kind of, you know, people tend to look out for themselves, but overall, just a bunch of up here as well. Such good people and giving people. And Jack just was right at the top of that list. He. He really helped me. We got to do a number of, of different commercials together, 
because uh, I was generally the young, really, you know, eager guy, and he was the boss <laughs> with his voice and the way he was. And, uh, he, he, you know, I just have the warmest feelings to both, uh, for both Jack and for, for Arlene that, that did so much for me. And he was involved in everything. Arlene was my, my first voiceover agent at Abe and Block and Lawrence, and then she left and went out on her own and started her own company. And in those early days, Jack was in there doing everything with you, you know, getting things going and putting tapes together and, and doing all that. And, um, you know, that's, that's really, I mean, it, it feels so good to be able to say about someone what a, what a fine person he was, you know. It, people that are that way deserve to be acknowledged for that because it's, it's really, you know, it changed my life and really made an imprint in me. So I'm just honored to be up here to be able to say that today. You know, all of that is true, but um, Jack would also uh, get you into trouble. <laughs> uh, we did a lot of Pixar movies together. Um, and we got, uh, we got called on the carpet a few times because we were supposed to be in getting ready to record and Jack would be regaling us one of, one of his stories or one of his uh, off-color jokes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Way off-color. Every once in a while he would tell them from the blue. Uh, and we would get in trouble because number one, we'd be making too much noise uh, laughing. Uh, and because you can't stop a story in the middle. <laughs> if, if you got a good joke, then you got to finish it. And Jack would finish them. Uh, so we would get a we get a draw every once in a while. Jack was also one of the one of the names that I knew before I moved to Los Angeles. When I was back in, in Minnesota, still doing stage and doing some stuff here and there, I knew Jack Angel's name, uh, and I knew uh, not what he what he could do and his versatility. And to come out to L.A. and to be able to work in the same room. With that man, uh, and with Michael Bell, these, these guys that uh, I grew up, not grew up, I was up. <laughs> but I was uh, the second youngest. Uh, uh, to, to work with somebody like Jack and the generosity of the man just blew me away. We would, uh, there was a time when all of us would audition for the stuff often against one another. And we would go into this studio or go into a you know, casting office and do our recordings, audition there, and actually see each other regularly. Now it's always, you know, you record at home and then maybe you see somebody, maybe you don't. Back then we could see everybody. And many of the time we would come out of the casting office, whether it was Elaine Craig's down um, uh, in Hollywood or wherever. Voice caster. Yeah, voice oh. caster. We'd come out and we would stand, we would wait for you know, stand telling jokes, Jack being the center, for you know, 15, 20, 25 minutes. And those are the moments that I remember more than more than did I get the job? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't it. It's about that sharing. And he shared. I'm, may I? I, yeah, I was thinking about something kind of like that, that actors tend to, artists tend to hang out, and uh, you're either hanging out, generally standing. I remember we were always standing, and somebody was going to go in and audition, or somebody was going to go in and record, or somebody was going to leave, or, but we were always standing. And you know, blah 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 blah, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. And then there would be a singer. And who said that? And you look over, and here's this guy with this shock of hair standing there, kind of like, um, okay, kind of like Flower in Bambi. Remember, Flower was kind of like this. With the hair, and then he'd look up, and then you'd see the twinkle. <laughs> so, yes, that's what I remember. Yeah, hanging out. Yeah. And Jack's twinkles. I'm sorry. 
I have a story I have to share um, because it changed, I guess, every day of the rest of my life. Um, when I first got here, I was on tour of the show and I uh, used day, uh, days off to meet with agents if I could, whatever. Uh, but I went on one of my first voiceover calls ever uh, in Los Angeles at the VoiceCaster and a lot of uh, very impressive, recognizable people were in the lobby. I walked in, I was intimidated just by the presence of all of it. Jack Angel got up, walked over to me, and he said, you're new, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, uh, I'm Jack Angel. And he said, uh, I'll be outside if you want to have a little chat. It's Jack. So I went outside, and he said, uh, I'm going to tell you a secret. He said, nobody in there knows more about what they're doing than you know about what you're doing, or you wouldn't be here. And um, so I warmed up inside. Uh, and he said, I get that. he said, here's a tip. He said, go in there and do your, Jack was the essence of cool to me. Uh, he was just walking cool, standing cool, talking cool, joking cool. Um, he said, go in there and do your thing because your thing won't be the same as anybody else's thing. So I thought that was the coolest thing I had ever heard. <laughs> Delivered in the coolest manner I had ever heard. And uh, I went in and did my thing. And uh, beginner's luck or Jack Angel of prophecy or whatever, I got that job. Uh, and I thanked him for it for the rest of my career. Uh, and I thought to myself a million times, what would Jack do? And so I walked over to people who I didn't know, introduced myself, and shared that story with them. And hopefully uh, I paid it forward, and the people to whom I paid it forward will continue to pay it forward. You know, we all get off the bus, we're all insecure, nobody knows what they're doing. Everybody wants uh, to have things go their way. But in the voice community, the voice print is so distinct and separate that essentially everyone who is who reaches the, the tier where you're being seen for everything or considered for everything, when you're in that tier, it's a flip of the coin. It's a time for first place. Someone is more right on a given day than someone else, or someone reminds them of their son-in-law that they hate, and so they're out. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but I, I'll never not be grateful to him for doing that for me, and I'll never not look for the opportunity to do that for others. Arlene, you were representing me then. I didn't go on that audition. <laughs> you were not on that tier. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be brief. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I came out here in about uh, 1980 in New York, and uh, in New York I, you know, I was working on stage, and, and uh, I did a lot of voiceovers for radio. There wasn't any animation in New York at that time, so I had a lot of radio experience. So I came out, and uh, at that time you could freelance with agents, and I freelanced them around with a lot of agents. I mostly worked with Cunningham. When I came out here, I went to Cunningham out here at and I met our lady for the first time. And I think Jack probably met her around that time too. Wasn't it around then? Like 70s. And, and I remember talking to him later on and saying, you know, boy, this our lady, she's a really great agent. I'm going to sign with her. And uh, he said, uh, it's a good idea. So he married her. <laughs> <laughs> so he agreed with me. Uh, Jack, uh, Jack was a little older than us, and he was like a teenager in the 50s. So he had that Elvis vibe, you know? He always wore black tight pants, black shirts and stuff. And occasionally he might have had a little pointy in another shoe, you know? And he had a little spit girl sometimes. And he was that cool. He was that James Dean thing, always, always, always. And, uh, very cool. And, and when we were together with our Lee, he, 
she mentored me, he helped me a lot. He gave me advice, he did all kinds of great things. And, and one day I asked him to listen to my demo tape. And he said, yeah, it's, a, it's pretty good, but it's too long. You should cut it. I said, oh, man, how do I cut it? He said, give it to me, I'll cut it. I'll cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave it to him, and a week or so later, he came back to me and he said, I couldn't do it. I said, what? What did I do? Did I screw it up? I said, I'm fucking up. He said, uh, I tried to cut it, but uh, I couldn't find anything that was shitty. It was all good, so keep it. <laughs> so, that, that was the best compliment I've ever gotten in this business in 50 years. And I will remember it and cherish it always. Uh, Jack was an elegant performer, and he was wonderfully silly. And, and I will truly, truly miss him. Too, to remember because I mean the people up here are all really successful now and, and heavy hitters in our business now but back then it wasn't the case with a lot of us but Jack was so for someone like that to take time out and, and be generous that way and do those things I mean to take your tape really and, and say oh I mean that's unheard of you know I mean just to give that angle on, on what it meant at that time to all of us I guess I'll jump in. Um, I had forgotten about this until I got up on the dais, and it suddenly popped back in my mind. It's so ridiculous. It shows you how stupid the business can be sometimes. Uh, does everybody know what the Pep Boys is? Yes. Yeah, automotive stores, and they have these three characters that supposedly own it Manny, Moe, and Jack, and they have little cartoons of it. Periodic, I don't think they've ever actually done it, but periodically they would say, We're going to give voices to the Pep Boys. <laughs> So we go to this place called the Voice Caster, where cleverly they cast voices, and they take us into the prison freeze. And I go in with Jack and some other fellow who I've forgotten. And uh, they assign Jack the role of Mo. <laughs> and the ad guys are all. It was Manny Mo and Jack. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, Manny Mo and Jack were the three characters. So Jack is assigned Mo. <laughs> And uh, the ad guys are across the glass, and they say, you guys ready to go? And Jack says, no, no. <laughs> he says, I want to be Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so this ad guy sticks his head through the window, you know, and he says, no, nah, you're not a Jack type. <laughs> <laughs> and that's voiceovers in a nutshell. <laughs> but, what people have said up here is very, very true. Jack was one of the touchstones for me, because I think I'm the only ex-disc jockey up here, uh, or as Maurice Tobias, a superstar voiceover coach, calls us recovery broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> and I found out this wonderful business voiceover existed, and I thought, yeah, but can I get in it? I mean, it's got to be all ex-actors, or still actors, just acting with their voices. I mean, I'm a freaking disc jockey, you know? And then I find out about Jack Angel and how he came out of the chalk booth and somehow had this fantastic success in the business. And that gave me a great deal of hope. And coincidentally, we both ended our careers at the same radio station, just different times. It was the old 710 KMPC here in Los Angeles. We were both working for the singing cowboy, Gene Autry. Jack, interestingly enough, when I met him, I found out he really took a chance because they were making good money at that station. And he walked away from it to do voiceovers full time. And he told me the first year he was out of the building, he said, I made about $12,000. Now, this was 70s money, but still, 12 grand was, was not great. But what he would do, and this is so fascinating, because most actors, you know, they sit home and they wait for the phone to ring. What else are you going to do? Jack would get in his car and he would drive to every voiceover studio in town. And there weren't that many back then, maybe half a dozen. And he would just hang out in the lobby and, and sort of meet people and, and tell jokes. You know. And people sort of got to, to know him. You could do that in those days. Now you go in a studio and say, are, are you here for? Back then you just stroll in, nobody gave a damn. And I thought, that's so clever. He, he created a job for himself. It's my job to go to these studios and get to know people. 
And hanging around studios actually paid off for him big time. Now, I, I'm sure he told but you. Let me add to that. He did a Valentine. Yeah. And someone did an artist drawing, put his face on it, and it says, Jack Angel loves you. He sent it to everybody, and they went, Who the hell's Jack Angel? <laughs> <laughs> Do we know Jack Angel? Should yeah. we know Jack Angel? And then the demo came, and then they knew Jack Angel. Oh, yeah, so it was, it was a promotion at the time that you could do. Today, the doors are closed. You know? Right. Yeah. But uh, that that was another big thing that he did. Yeah, he was really good at uh, promoting himself without being obnoxious. Right. Which is, it's a tough thing to pull off. Remember me? I'm still here. Remember me? Yeah. You don't want to get to the part where they go, yes, I remember you. Like, get away from me. No, <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> so, uh, where the hell, oh yeah, now maybe this story got exaggerated, but Jack well, did, did a session, and he didn't have any, uh, he maybe had a couple hours before the next one, and he almost left the studio, and then he decided to hang around in the lobby and BS with people. And suddenly somebody runs out of the door, comes running down the hall, and says, Is anybody here uh, an announcer? And Jack, oh, okay. And the guy says, do you have a beer? Huh? Now, what he meant by that was, do you not do you have a bottle of beer in your hand? He meant, are you voicing a, a beer at the moment? Because you can't voice for, you have conflict. You can't do Coors Light and Budweiser at the same time. So Jack said, no, I, I remember Bob Lloyd once asked me, do you have a car? And I said, yes, we're not alliance. <laughs> Tommy. But anyway, Jack said, oh, I don't have a beer. And the guy says, come with me. And he goes into the thing and he says, here, read this. Okay, Olympia Brewing Company, Tom Water, Washington. He said, read it three or four times. Okay, sign here. Thank you, Bob, oh, you saved my life. <laughs> Apparently they put that on the end of every commercial they released for the next four or five years and Jack made a fortune. It's <laughs> not an exaggeration. You, is, that, is that true, Arlene? Yes. Or? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the one that you didn't make a fortune on was Dr. Pepper. Oh, they want me to be professional. <laughs> uh, he added a line for Dr. Pepper, just what the doctor ordered. Mm. Never got paid for it, they used it, end of story. Yeah. Sorry for the bad news on that. <laughs> I like my version better. Yeah, let's go back to the beer, let's go back to the beer. Um, I have a couple beer stories, but that's okay. <laughs> well, let me just wrap up by saying what almost everybody on this panel has said, and that's how generous Jack was, uh, I'm sure. He gave advice to people who will never even know about. I remember he had this wonderful theory about triangles. Remember yes. this one? Yes. Yeah, he said your career is like a triangle. One side of the triangle is work. The other two sides are practice and promotion. And he says, now a triangle, in order to remain a triangle, if one side gets bigger, the other two sides have to get bigger. It's not a triangle anymore. So he says, you have control over two sides of the triangle. You have control over how much you practice, and you have control over how much you promote yourself. And if those sides get bigger, then the work side has to. I said, Jack, are you okay? Do you need to sit down? <laughs> no, but it, you know, it sounded kind of airy fairy, but it worked. You know, I, I began to realize that uh, anytime I did anything in the way of promotion or taking workshop, somehow the work got better, got bigger, and so he was, he was absolutely right. So I don't have a big finish, but he was a lovely man, and uh, we'll all miss him. Yeah. I remember coming down from Arlene, Arlene's my agent too, Coming down, how we could still go out and get in elevators. Okay, and I remember coming down in the elevator, and and you well, you know your your mind is you know half where you just were and and half where you're going, and who cares? And oh, but where where's my car? Is it that way? Is it that way? And I would come out of the elevator, and I must have always auditioned around the same time because Jack would be coming in the lobby as I came out of the elevator. And 
He would always light up. We all know the, the worries, people who smile and it's just right here, and then people who smile and the whole. I felt like I was the only person in the world. And he would just light up, and of course, I would light up back because you do that and it changes the whole trajectory of your day. And, and that was just about all. We kind of go, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? And we were just smiling. And that's really what I remember most about him. He was just very open. And he was very, very glad to see you. Yeah. yeah. Just quickly, as we're sitting here, I keep thinking about what Lori said and the use of the words elegant and silly. Because somewhere between those two words is where Jack lived. Uh, I just want to add that. I just thought that was brilliantly succinct. What a succinct name. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, to do in a kitchen sink. Oh, <laughs> this might be a good moment. I think we have some footage that we're going to show. Like this. You mean Galvatron? Well, they were the same guy. My birthday? I don't even know when that is. The one called Ultra Magnus stands in our way. Marissa, get up here. You're going home. Nobody moves. I am boarding that escape pod and will destroy anyone who gets in my way. Quiet, Starscream! I've got a coronation to attend! Well, I started off as Smokescreen, and then I became Ramjet, and then uh, Astro Train, and uh, uh, Omega Supreme, and uh, Ultra Magnus, and Cyclonus, and one other that I can't remember, and I could never remember it because it must have been like a one-day thing that never came back. So whoever it was, <laughs> so what? It uh, started in, in uh, Merced, California, uh, which is a little valley town in the San Joaquin Valley. And that was my first radio job. And I was terrible, but I learned how to do it, you know. And... Uh, and it eventually got pretty good. What was your favorite uh, Transformer character that you voiced? You're asking me to tell you which of my children I preferred <laughs> over the others, and I loved them all equally, except in real life. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, I was always a good joke killer when I was a kid, and I could make my mother laugh. And when you can make the goddess of everything laugh, you know, she's less likely to take a swing at you. And uh, I would, as I got older, I would tell off-color jokes to my mother, and she would, oh, Jackie, you're, you're awful. <laughs> Somebody else has been in this underwear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got out of San Francisco State University and uh, got into radio and was very, very funny. Did a lot of Dick Godier's material. And I was going with this girlfriend, uh, Lynn McTavish. Oh, she was great. And I Lynn McTavish. <laughs> I just want to take issue with one thing he said. <laughs> Only one? One. <laughs> going from radio, I transitioned into, when I finally got to LA, uh, to uh, uh, in, in, uh, discover, Wally Bird discovered me, and I discovered Wally. And uh, Wally was the director of a lot of cartoons, and that started me on the road to doing cartoons. And we just never have stopped. Wally was a tank commander in World War II. He was an officer in the army. What? He was a forward tank observer. Well. He was a tough guy. <laughs> and he gave me another line read. He says, Jack, listen to this. And now you could feel in the room all the energy, all the guys. You go, oh, God, Jack, he's going to kill him. And 
So he gave me one more reading, and then I did an imitation of him. And he said, now you're doing an imitation of me. You know, for 10 years, I did NBC promos. Uh, you know, tonight on NBC. You know, that, that kind of yeah. stuff. And, or I did the Johnny Carson Tonight Show promos, which was coming up on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. You know, you're the best you that ever was. You're the only you that ever was. In, in terms of the universe, you're, you're such a small speck, but you're totally into an individual. And the moment that you exist in this vastness is a special moment because it's the only moment in which you exist. Be that person. And if a thousand other people are there and, 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 and they don't know that that same thing, you have the upper hand. So don't let them spook you out. Just go be who you are. Be as wonderful as you are. Be in love with yourself. And don't let anybody tell you anything different. There's ample evidence that all of this is a big illusion. <laughs> and, and we're just a bunch of atoms all jammed together. And, and the whole purpose of our lives is to have fun. And so if you're not having fun, you're doing your life wrong. So have fun. We have never worked for a living. We have done something that we've loved. And it was never work. And we made nice money and had great careers. And we wind up with people like you. Your passion for what we did is so much stronger than our passion for what we did. <laughs>
we, uh, we were a group that would add all the additional little uh, jokes here and there, and little smaller characters in the Pixar movies. And often, um, there's one, especially, what, what they would do is they'd have us come up, they'd pick out three or four people, and you come up and you do voice one of the characters. Here are the lives, do these. And there are times when, uh, and we'd be sitting back listening to each other do them. And often I would be doing the same voices, some of the older voices, the heavier voices, the deeper voices, as Jack. And it used to irritate me that they would say, why do you want me to do the same thing that Jack is going to? Jack's going to end up doing it because I would cast him over me and I <laughs> And there was one time, and you never know until, the, until it comes out who, who they chose, what voice they, they went with. Um, but I remember there was one, and I remember Jack saying, when I finished the audition, he said, yeah, it's yours. It's like, no, it's not. No, no. And, we, and it came out. It was Monsters, uh, uh, Monsters Incorporated. And it was me. And so Jack knew. But I did, and, and I'll be honest, you know, my chest popped up a little bit. It's like, I got something that Jack didn't get? Because I was born I would always cast Jack. Because, how do you not? But the, the big thing was the fun. He always made it fun. And sometimes we got into trouble because we were having too much fun. Um, and we said awful, often, it was like, they're actually paying us to do this. We're getting paid to have fun with animation and hanging out with, with uh, fellow actors. And I just love being around with that. Well, if there's anything that anyone would like to say to Ms. Send our cast up here. Make her stand up and walk.
and I'm going to miss that.
Yeah. Okay. Well, so, yeah. Thank you.